I knew it was going to be a business trip, so I expected to more about the business side of India. But because it's also a place that I had never been before and I realized how little I knew, I basically thought I would learn a lot about the culture, about the food, about the places, about the history. And so, and, and I learned all that. In recent years, uh, India has become a big player in the global economy. And as a result, uh, many, many Indian students have come to the United States to get their MBA. And we've benefited from this as well. Uh, nearly 20% of our MBA class in the last couple of years have been Indians. And India was a place that was always on my bucket list. And so, uh, given the opportunity, I jumped at it. India is going to be one of the leading countries in the global economy over the next several decades. There's a lot of talk about China, and I think China's well covered. But India has been a little bit of a sleeper compared to its larger neighbor, China. You can't look at the auto industry without hearing about the Tata Nano. You can't look at the steel industry without hearing about um, Tata again. So because every industry and every company today is global, whether you realize it or not, these global influences and major forces need to be understood. So again, India being a major player in the global economy, we felt this was something that would give our students uh, a bit of a leg up, something that not everyone would have, an understanding of a crucial player in the global economy. The best part of the trip, we sat down with the leaders of every single company. Um, I would assume that here in the U.S., if you meet companies, you're probably not going to talk to the CEO the first time you come, but everybody was so welcoming on this trip. Um, talking to the CEO of SuperValue India, we realized how much he's involved in how successful his company is. He's working with the people on the floor. I love traveling, and I've been to you know a few different places, but never had the opportunity to go to India or anywhere really quite like India and I thought it was just a great chance to do that, uh, see the country, the culture and also get um, exposed to some of the, the businesses over there. The Infosys campus just blew the Google campus away. I mean it's so incredibly modern. They've got pools, basketball courts, um, you know, bicycles that employees can ride everywhere and like I said just very modern architecture and it was just I did not expect it at all. And they provide everything for their employees I thought it was interesting to see how very um, educated people in India really have awesome career opportunities with companies like this. And they really treat their employees better than we would in France. <laughs> so that was pretty, uh, that was really amazing. On the other side, I kind of liked the, um, the carpet manufacturing because I remember my parents having carpets all over the house and I never knew how they were really made. And so seeing how they actually make the carpets by hand was really was really cool too. India is that emerging economy that's really going to be important during my business career. They have a very young population. It's educated and a lot of companies are moving there so I felt it was important to understand the culture, the geography and also the business practices in India. The preparation that they had done and the understanding they were developing was just being enhanced by actually being there and seeing it. That was the point of the trip, to be prepared, but then to actually see it for yourself. As you know, nothing makes an impression like seeing it yourself. One of the fascinating industries that we saw is the laundry industry. And this is done by a group of, a very large group of men. And they are, of course, very low in the social standing, but they have developed an extremely profitable business for themselves. They go all around town collecting laundry. This is from hotels. This is from institutions, hospitals, also from individuals. They bring it all in. It's, it covers acres and acres. This was an example of, yes, living within the cultural, um, restrictions that are still there due to the hangovers of the caste system, but yet a tremendous uh, spirit of innovation and one of the prime objectives in India is to work for yourself. This raises you in the social status. So this entrepreneurship 
you know, the students were familiar with, and then to see it in action was absolutely fascinating. Understanding culture was so key to appreciating um, what's going on in um, one of the major companies there. We visited the 4S Group, and it's a privately owned, family owned company, a leader in pumps and piping. And the president and chairperson invited us to their private club to meet, which was elegant and beautiful, uh, which was just extending Indian hospitality, first of all. Well, as we were sitting there waiting uh, for the president and chairman to come in, who appears but a beautiful woman dressed in uh, typical Indian clothing, accompanied by her beautiful daughter. And she was the president and chairman. She had taken over from her father, who had started the company. And she explained to us how in her community, as it's now called, because caste, of course, is illegal, but it's still a very strong influence in Indian operations and certainly the economy and, and social interactions. They call it now their community. In her community, things pass through the matriarch. And so the company had passed to her, and she was going to be passing it to her daughter. So without some understanding of that, which we had had a lecture on caste uh, and social standing, uh, I don't think the students would have appreciated as much. I learned a lot about the culture, the political system, uh, business, how business is conducted there, uh, the interrelationships between the United States, uh, any different countries and India, because they're really becoming uh, a global power and it's, uh, it's great for any Western business person to experience that. Towards the end, I could see that all of these things were really coming together in their mind and that they were, they were forming what we had hoped they would form, a very informed and rich picture of how culture, religion, geographic diversity all play into what is now uh, the Indian experience. I would not trade it for the world, but it was very shocking and humbling. Everybody should have that opportunity just to broaden their minds and their perspectives about the world. Uh, we may be enemies at the political level, but uh, everybody's friends at the personal level. Traffic is insane and, uh, and it was really funny to see that for me because we have this idea of India as a developing country with not as many cars, etc. But they travel almost as much as here in the U.S., except it's different mode of transportation. So it's a lot more buses, a lot more trucks, a lot more motorcycles. I teach statistics, which has nothing to do with the trip to India, but uh, my love in life is, is traveling and learning about new cultures. And, and here I was uh, learning about a new, another culture, and, and I absolutely enjoyed it. There's absolute destitute poverty next to opulent wealth. And it was just very shocking, since I've really only traveled in Western Europe before that, to go to an emerging country that still has some issues. And it was, it was very humbling and it made me feel very blessed, but at the same time, really eye-opening. I think it really taught me business skills and just gave me an insight into a culture that and, and a different way of doing business that I'll definitely use in the future. Overall, it's just awareness that we're all different and that we all think differently, and there's nobody right and nobody's wrong. We were in Jaipur, and uh, it was the kite festival. We we're sitting on the roof of the hotel, flying kites, along with thousands and thousands of others in the city that were flying kites at the same time, and it was just like, you know, we're part of this and uh, we've accepted this and they've accepted us. One of the highlights of the trip for me, not at all business related, was um, the fact that I was able to ride an elephant and I was very happy about that. And it was the perfect environment. We, we rode on an elephant to go up to the Jaipur fort. It was a beautiful way of going up. It was very touristy, you have to admit. I mean, it was almost like a highway of elephants and you know, traffic jams of elephants, but it was, it was a really cool experience. It was really nice. The whole MBA program at Mason is great to teach you all the tools and everything you're gonna need to know to go work in a company. But the moment that you, an MBA, if an MBA graduates with just that, they're not necessarily gonna be that successful. You have to understand how to adapt, how to be flexible, and I think this trip was all about that.